Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week two, day two of the VGL Challenger Spring Split. My name is Scoundrel, and if you're wondering why my face isn't on your screen, apart from in a picture, I'm a little bit under the weather today, and I don't want to turn you all off your food just before tea time, so I've selected a picture from me from last year, just chilling. And uh, I'm here with Humanist and Tasty Bacon again. Gentlemen, there's going to be a lot of me relying on you in these sections, I think, but uh, Humanist... A long day yesterday. How how you have you recharged? Are you feeling alright for today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling all right, scoundrel. I'm sorry to hear that you're not feeling so well, dear sir. And get well soon, so you can get back on that camera. <laughs> and I got Tasty Bacon as well, who is now casting from a broom closet because apparently that is the best way to hear his voice so crisply and cleanly. <laughs> It's more so that you don't hear too much of my voice. You know, you don't want it reverbing around and hearing it multiple times. But yes, yes, I am uh, casting. I have secluded myself into a small closet. And uh, hey, it works. If it, if it looks dumb, but it works, it's not dumb. That's that's my life policy. Well, I think that's a great life policy. Now, gentlemen, let's have a look at the games that we have coming up today. We'll bring up the schedule on your screen. First of all, if you haven't guessed, we are starting with Reliable Union versus Oblivion Lost, two teams that we have shown on the stream previously. Obviously, Oblivion Lost looked really good. I believe it was yesterday. I'm sure Humanist or Tasty Bacon could confirm with me. Um, and this is the winner's bracket, uh, round four. So these guys haven't lost yet, and they are still planning on continuing that success through the winner's bracket. Remember, at the end of the day, today, we should know our entire playoff bracket, ready to get into the real meat and bones of the VGL Spring Split, where we really come down to the knockout stages and we get our true champions right at the end. We're going to be following up with Lemon and Lime versus Helldivers. Obviously, Lemon and Lime, Mr. Kekul's team, everybody should have some experience having seen them play before. They also haven't lost yet, so that's another winner's bracket game. And then really? we're going to have Voodoo Curse versus Vain Guardian, which is in the loser's bracket. And we're going to have another loser's bracket round after that. So we've got some really good games today, Humanist. That's pretty exciting. Um, Mr. K. Cole's team hasn't lost yet, huh? That's pretty cool. I, and I've been uh, waiting for him to grind uh, back up to the top. You know, he was at live championships. I think he's a great player. He really is. Uh, he's, again, he's from the UK as well, so I can uh, I can say, go Mr. K. Cole, fellow countryman. That's right. And we're going to be uh, really ready to draft in a second, just waiting for some of the people to get back and ready to go into it. So while we wait, let me tell you about the giveaway that we have going on, ladies and gentlemen. It is this grand giveaway of two Elgato HD 60S capture cards, fantastic pieces of equipment. And we're also giving away weekly 9,000 ice over at vaingloryleague.com forward slash giveaway. So go and check that out because uh, you know, really want to get your hands on one of those amazing pieces of equipment. And not only that, that you aren't the only ones that could win a HD60S capture card. Our winners of VGL will not only get a lion's share of $2,500, which, you know, for those of you that aren't native to English, means a large portion of it. Uh, you'll also get a custom-printed HD60S capture card with the VGL logo and a red motif with the winning hero composition that you won the finals with. You get that composition embezzled, embellished, whatever else begins with E, onto the bottom side of this capture card. Excoundrelled. <laughs> Excoundrelled. You get it excoundrelled onto the bottom of this capture <laughs> card. And it's a fantastic, fantastic uh, prize for obviously everybody involved. But not only that, gentlemen, they also get their shot at the Vainglory 8, the, uh, the big leagues where they can take on some of those professional teams. I think it's pretty exciting. Also, I mean, what's cool this season, uh, these teams are going to get to pick which, uh, you know, Vainglory 8 team they get to play against, which is really cool. That's awesome. No, it's going to be fantastic. Now, we're into draft. Ladies and gentlemen, I will apologize to you in advance if my camera work is as terrible as it usually is. Um, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> it's all right when they say EU cameraman, they're not lying. Yeah, I, I thing is, I only started doing this for this tournament, so or actually the Blitz tournament, but I was even worse at that then. So, I'm, I'm it's learning. Tough. I know. I'm learning. Yeah, it's tough to host and do the camera and stuff. I understand. And do the production and not mute your microphone and all those kind of things. So, I yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Adagio seems to be prioritizing Glaive Band coming from Reliable Union. 
and the response from Oblivion lost. They are thinking about multiple options. Seems like they're really hammering in on the Lance, though. Both members saying that they would like that Lance locked in. Not a, good... a bad move here. Yeah. But not a bad move, says Humanist. What else would not be a bad move, do you think, to try and give them a, a solid B-side draft here? Uh, the, well, they're leaning towards their, their carry, it looked like. I, I honestly think the Ringo or Vox would be a nice pick. Probably the Ringo, honestly. It's the Fortress! So we're either going to see a uh, Stormcrown CP Fortress, potentially, or we're going to see a carry Lance. We'll have to see where this one transpires. What do you, what do you, when you pick this kind of composition, Bacon, what, what are they actually trying to do? Well, it's a lot of early game pressure and a lot of just being able to chase onto and dive onto their opponents. But well, with the Koska pickup, their opponents might just be coming to them instead. Okay, that's super early aggression coming out, Humanist. And uh, we, well, we did see the, the Jungle Fortress yesterday. We mm -hmm. did, yeah. We'll have to see so what they I mean, round out with. It just feels like that's probably where they're leaning, especially when the Adagio is there. It's kind of going to have the, this whole team just running at them. So it's going to be Vox locked in here. Koshka, Vox, Adagio. So we're going to probably see a Captain Adagio. Although, funny, funny enough, I have seen Carry Adagio and Captain Vox before. Which may sound <laughs> funny, but it's the agent of wrath. He just put on the Vox, and he and he doesn't. I think he goes a couple of Captain items like Fountain and Stormcrown or something, and he just becomes pretty insane damage output himself. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's going to be the uh, it's likely going to be the Captain Adagio, and we're going to see Ringo. So they are going to go down that path that you said, Humanist. But they wanted to be sure that Ringo was the right choice. Gives him a good laning matchup versus the Vox. Yeah, I mean, one of them was going to get through, I guess. Uh, so no matter what, they just go ahead and pick uh, pick their poison and. and you know, it works out. They have a very strong draft. It looks like a... It's, is Daredevil is their jungler here? Um, I can't remember. Yes, yes. HF guy, he HF guy is definitely the captain. HF guy is definitely, yeah. definitely the captain. Now, I am going to go find more paracetamol to dose myself up on. And when I come back, I'll be feeling probably just about the same I am now. But for the moment, time, I'm going to give it over to Humanist and Tasty Bacon to take you through this game. All right. Thanks, Excalendrol. Take care of yourself. Make yourself some hot tea and wrap yourself up in the blanket stay healthy bacon stay safe in your closet while we get this game <laughs> started here uh this should be a pretty good matchup oh well, we'll have to see i mean there's definitely i feel like the early game is going to heavily favor the side of uh of lost here as you know, they just they have so much pressure they can bring out. It's going to be the Captain Lance, like we were talking about. But Ringo, once he gets just, even just the Sorrow Blade completed, you pair that with the Fortress jumping in, giving move speed to the other two. And then you have Lance impaling someone, Githian walling them. Like That's so much lockdown for Ringo to just sit there and pepper into them with uh, that massive damage Ringo is able to bring out early on and harass with. Ooh, talk about damage early, though. Please. HF guy's going to tick down. I give the fire. Pretty good right there. Riku Meza actually claiming the back Triant as well. Yeah, I was actually watching the lane matchup. Didn't even see that there's a fight happening in the jungle. Very aggressive play from Reliable Union to start things off. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Lance, very strong early. I, You know, I think if Lance was the jungler, they couldn't really do that invade. But, you know, Lance on the captain here, they were able to get around him. And there's not much this fortress could really do. He He definitely needs an item or two. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the fortress can have trouble in the early game jungle, and Reliable Union definitely looking to take advantage of that. Yeah, this is uh, not fun, and they're gonna have Ringo rotate down, need some help. That's actually fortress grabbing the mid there. Rico Meza taking some damage. There's no game, no life is here. They'll get that basic shot off, get that kill, and uh, Liko's gonna try and get out the backside, but impaled up. He should be going down. Get the involved, and that's gonna be fortress taking the kill. So. Now two one in favor of Oblivion Lost. Yeah, absolutely able to come back strong after that early invade. Uh, no game, no life. Going to be just kind of free farming in the lane for now. Let's uh, take a look at the difference between the laners. It's not much there, but it's a lot more minions available to No Game No Life than there are to Axel at the moment. Yeah, definitely. This wave is going to be pushing and forward here. We'll see if uh, No Game can. Be tight on his last hitting there. Right now, 
see more jungle action as they uh I don't believe they were able to steal away camp from fortress that time but here comes the members of reliable union nice scout yeah. trap to spot them out <laughs> a nice scout trap that's perfect that's all you got to do you know i mean it because if they rotate up that side right there and ring goes forward at all it's a pretty easy kill mm -hmm. Koshka was able to get the mid as well from uh, the side of Oblivion Lost. So that's a win. Takes the, the Elder Chance. We'll take her front. So she's going to have pretty decent levels. We'll expect a nice level 6 timing. Vox impaled up. He's going to try and Sonic Zoom backwards with his boots. He's able to get out of that one. Pretty scary situation, Bacon. Yeah, pretty scary, but he's able to stay alive. Going to be actually taking a little bit of a risk here sticking around with his health this low. It does have the Adagio to help heal him and stay in fighting shape. So I'm going to feel pretty confident there. As you can see, already back up to almost full thanks to the Adagio healing. Kashka in the jungle once again, taking away the mids from Oblivion Lost. Fortress has to go ahead and just let these go, but he does have a Stormguard banner. He can start to kind of contest some of these. Impale's going to miss. Rika Meza turns it around, just smashes this lance into the ground. No game, no life. He's out of energy, but he's twirling silvered up, trying to defend this turret. Daredevil made his way up. But this is not really the power spike on the fortress that we're looking for quite yet, Bacon. And Reliable Union doing a pretty good job. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Both of these teams bringing the fight to each other. Kind of expected it when you saw you know, the Lance Fortress and then Koshka coming up from the other side. It's just so much early game aggression from both teams. But for now, things are pretty even. Look at the gold, 9.8 to 9.8, dead even there. And so well, it'll just come down to who can outplay who once the fights actually start breaking out. I want to put a double contract for HF guy. Look at the, both the yeah. protector and the iron guard, whereas on the other side, uh, Lico de Dogs? I would say Lico. Lico. Lico didn't go for any contract, so... A little bit of a difference in mentality for the captains there. I like the double contracts. Look, at, I, I wanted to point out the levels. Koshka level 6, Daredevil just getting level 5. This is pretty big advantage at this point. Well, we'll see if they can take advantage of it. Uh, everyone kind of hanging around this area. Rika Meza. I'm going to jump forward, just slaps HF guy. Let's him know he is there. Not going to have that element of surprise. If they can get on target, they can do a lot of work, though. Ricky Meza, he's onto the turret. Axel taking a lot of damage. That's the fountain out of Reliable Union. And this turret will go down to a last hit there, coming out of the Adagio. They don't want to fight right now. Well, maybe they do. There is no fountain over here yet for Oblivion Lost. As soon as Lance gets back to the shop, he should be able to pick that up. I'm actually a little bit surprised that Oblivion Lost didn't act, you know, try and take that fight a little bit more aggressively. They got so much damage down onto Axel, forced out the fountain very early on. I feel like they really could have uh, maybe tried to push the issue, picked up a couple of kills there, and then pushed the lane back in their favor. But said they just sort of lose their turret. They get nothing out of it, and that's just going to be an advantage going over to the side of Reliable Union. Yeah, pretty straightforward. I... Um... It was just kind of like the second rotation of the same turret pressure they put out before. Mm -hmm. They kind of avoided the heroes. They just go straight for the objective, and it would work out for them. Maybe a little bit of a clash here as the Yummy Cat and Frenzy right on the No Game's face. The Verse comes out as well. <laughs> That's a dead Ringo. Daredevil's on the run, and the Fortress is not meant to be running away. It's supposed to be running at you. Are they going to lose HF Guy as well? My goodness, a lot of damage. Yeah, that was a really nicely timed fight for Reliable Union. Just using everything in tandem, getting that Yummy Cat and Frenzy down to lock up the Ringo. Wait for it came out almost immediately after, and then perfectly timed Verse of Judgment in order to secure the kills. And uh, so two kills more going the way of Reliable Union. You get that turret as well. They are starting to really rack up the gold. Yeah, they are. They look really strong right now. I don't know. This is just them feeling comfortable. This is going to be Infusion coming out here. Level 8 Infusion. Riga Meza is looking to snowball this one out. Hellfire Brew is going to be coming out onto the Koshka. It does land. No game. you got to be careful in your positioning for your team here. Daredevil taking a bit of damage. They're going to go ahead and just get out of this one with the Fountain Burn. Don't want to commit. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, fountain burned and a couple of items getting picked up by the members of Oblivion Lost off of those last deaths they just took. So I didn't want to risk giving them too much ground back in this game. Like you said, that early infusion, level 8 infusion. Don't be surprised if Riku Meza does look for some more fights once they have everything back off of cooldown. And uh, they were able to take a very controlling stance off of the last push they made. And now they're gonna, just going to rotate up to the lane and look to maybe have a repeat performance. Yeah. I guess the I'm, I'm trying to sit over here and think how uh, Oblivion Lost are going to find a fight that will favor them. They're finally starting to get the items that they need, but they really don't have crazy good items. I mean, mm -hmm. Breaking Point's not... It'll be coming out fairly soon. Ringo can find damage, but it almost has to be like a Dagio completely out of position. Yummy Cat and Frenzy on the HF guy. He's pretty durable, but they're getting a lot of damage out. They lost HF guy with no fountain. Daredevil let loose that attack of the pack, and he's going to fall as well. No game. Forced to use his boots and just exit out of that one. A complete failure, failure of a fight. Yeah, and the problem I'm seeing right now for Oblivion Lost is they have a composition that's so heavily based around them being the aggressors and they're getting jumped on constantly. Like that last one, HF guy was very far forward, very aggressive positioning with that Lance. He actually did manage to land the impale, but there's no one there with him to follow it up. And there's members of reliable union. They recognize that and say, okay, we're just going to turn and jump on you. You Ringo, they saw Ringo up in the lane. They knew he couldn't get there quite in time to join mm -hmm. that fight when he needed to so they just started up take down the lance very quickly the captain's out of the way fountain's not going to come out now and that's a lot of that's all of the lockdown of this team they have literally yep. no form of crowd control other than slows outside of that uh lance so with lance gone it's just an easy decision to continue that aggression hf guy drops a little githian wall action combat rolls away doing a little scouting for his team but quickly reposition crystal century is going to be moving out we'll see if reliable union want to clean that up it's crystal century making a way out crystal century's irritated they can want some trying to get some here so oblivion lost let this just happen or are they going to go ahead and defend this crystal century fight. it's like, down you have that extra damage coming in you you should be fighting there like that's yeah. that's your opportunity to rush in everything is off cooldown just attack the pack impale someone have no game to like sit on the other side of the wall like a full commit like yeah I feel like that was just a really big missed opportunity okay so what are they waiting for if not that opportunity <laughs> excellent question <laughs> it, it could be that they want infusion oh a two-man impale the wave it's going to come out no game taking some good damage it was the atlas pauldron applied so ringo can't really do anything the verse is going to come through daredevil just absolutely burnt alive there with that verse hellfire brew will connect but that's going to be just a heal out of a dodge deal and Really negates all of that damage. HF guy doing his best. They, they can barely clear out the minions here. Riku Neza should be able to get out of this one. Turrets down. 11 minutes into this, Bacon. Dude, okay, tell me what you think about this. What if it was like CP Ringo, Weapon Lance with the Captain Fortress? It feels like then they could have like this very threatening front line with like still abusing range. I mean... It would fit their the play style that they're using right now a lot better because they are just they're playing so defensively and so far like the biggest problem I'm seeing from Oblivion Loss is they just aren't committing to fights. Like the HF guy will go in and obviously then Fortress will jump in as well because that's how he gets involved. But Ringo is just always staying back, never being in range to deal the damage, and as a result the members of Reliable Union are just able to kill either HF Guy or Daredevil without having to really worry about the retaliation coming out from Ringo. So there's just, there's no consequences for the members of Reliable Union committing to these fights. And that's exactly why they're winning. They're committing all in on these fights. They're getting their kills. And, you know, yeah, Oblivion Lost isn't getting aced, but they're not gaining any ground. They're just constantly losing ground. Again, tur third turret down at 11 minutes without an ace coming through. Like they're, they're just being so defensive that they can't even defend their structures. It's true. Maybe they're trying to lull them to sleep, Bacon. 
You know, it's like you, you go ahead and you let them feel no consequences multiple times. And then you just, you go full speed. You take them out. You run through it. To be fair, they do take objectives very quickly if they do commit to it. So, like, if mm -hmm. they win a fight, uh, Kraken spawns, they will be able to take it super quick with turrets. Yeah, they'd be able to. But they need to win that fight first. And you look at the items. I mean, look at Axel already sitting on the breaking point double monocle, now building up perhaps towards a serpent's mask just to survive even longer. Whereas No Game No Life, Sorrow Blade breaking point. Like, the the difference is just you can't even compare those two because Axel should just melt through this Ringo so quickly. They should, but can they keep him at range? They're closing the gap right now. Attack of the Pack is out. Daredevil, he can't do anything. He's locked down. HF guy's trying to run away, but so is No Game. HF guy will drop that Githian wall. No Game, can he live? Oh my goodness, makes it up to the healing platform. Riku Meza felt like he almost thought about diving up there for it hellfire brew comes out just a little bit of tickle action axel riku meza and Liko flexing trying to end this game before kraken spawns riku meza taking a lot of damage got the atlas off though so the ringo cannot follow up yeah, at least uh ringo has enough power to clear out those minions quickly so they can't go diving the double turrets just yet but this is everything is coming up for Libel Union right now. It is so heavily in their favor. Maybe we'll get some recalls in just to get the health and energy back. Maybe prepare for another fight. 30 seconds until Kraken. You know, again, this Kraken could be where Oblivion lost. Maybe try and make something happen, but it's they, they just severely lack the damage needed in order to fight toe to toe with a Reliable Union at the moment. Yep. And Ringo's boots are on cooldown. This is terrible. Flare is going to come out. These guys need mobility through these fights. Once Kosh goes on Ringo, they have to be able to reposition. They have to stay at range from Vox. Can't let him close the gap. Once Vox is on top of Ringo, it's pretty much over, it feels like. Oblivion lost. As a group, retreating into the depths of their jungle. Reliable Union, they're going to go ahead and push the wave forward. Still sitting on that significant advantage, but it's a 3 versus 2 so Oblivion Lost look to find the engage. A verse comes out, cancels it. It's blocked off though. Yummy Cat and Frenzy blocked as well. Oblivion Lost. They're once again on the retreat and they need to be running at targets. Can they reuse bacon? Can they just, just turn around and kill someone? Do some damage. Oblivion Lost, pick a target, kill him. Rico Meza, he's just onto the Ringo. Ringo just wants to run away. I'm looking for some stutter stepping. It's not enough. It's not happening. HF guy is down. Reliable Union have found the ace bacon. It looks like. This is not the game for Oblivion Lost. Yeah, not on this. All like all of this stems back to that first turret that Reliable Union took down. Uh, I, I felt like there was just huge opportunity for them to pick up kills while Reliable Union was pushing in that turret. And uh, just Oblivion Lost not pulling the trigger. That was a, a huge issue for them this game. They weren't pulling the trigger on these fights. Even in that last one, you, you, were, you were even just saying he wanted them to just stop and just blow up a target. But it was any time one of them decided to stop and try and blow up a target, the other two were running. It was that was constantly the the problem here was that the team just didn't really seem to be on whatsoever when it came to team fighting. Well, hopefully it's something they can correct moving into game two. And uh, we're gonna have to see a scoundrel. What do you think about game one here? Yeah, first of all, apologies if anyone can hear a loud buzzing in the background of my voice. The hot water tank has come on and I can't turn it off. So we'll, uh, hopefully that will go through pretty quickly. I I I'm wondering, guys, that specifically with... Uh, was that all because of the early game Koshka aggression? Was she the one that, that essentially really shut down this fortress, stopping them from ever getting the front foot? Yeah, she was. It was, it was just the fact that they had no good damage output source early. If they rotated the Ringo, they would have had to do it probably... On, mm -hmm. like together from their first rotation, not putting him in lane first and then moving down because he was too late. Koshka had already won. And so they I, maybe next game they rotate as a, a, a unit just to force her out early. Absolutely. Now we're going to be heading into the next draft phase ASAP here. Between these two teams, obviously Oblivion lost in Reliable Union. Reliable Union have looked very strong so far. They are going to be 1-0 up in this uh, series. Tasty Bacon, what do you think can change for Oblivion Lost this time around? Not picking the Fortress-Lance combo? I, I don't think the Fortress-Lance combo was necessarily the problem. I think it was just the 
the way that they played that com- like they didn't play that combo the way that you really should have played that combo like they weren't being aggressive um again like fortress i i get wanting to get build the storm crown first because you want that extra damage to be, to be able to clear but you have to adapt to the situation going on in the game if you're having a good game if you're not getting aggressed upon then yeah, the Storm Crown first item isn't bad. It, it lets you farm up really quickly. But when you're being constantly pushed in and constantly having camp stolen away from you and such, you need to alter your build path so that you can get a little bit of damage to deal with the invading opponents as opposed to focusing on being able to take down the neutral objectives. So uh, they didn't really adapt very well to what Reliable was u- what Reliable Union was doing. And uh, that could end up being a big issue for them. We're just waiting for Humanist to uh, get back into the lobby. Waiting for him to accept the invitation and we'll be ready to go. He's just restarting the application so we won't be too long. I think uh, I, I've had this issue sometimes. Sometimes when you leave yourself on the victory scheme for too long, it might actually end up kicking you from the lobby. So, Anyway, I'll just uh, quickly go over our games for today again while we wait to get underway. Let's have a look at our up next bracket. Obviously right now we're seeing Oblivion Lost versus Reliable Union. Reliable Union are 1-0 up right now, but later on we'll have Lemon and Lime versus Helldivers. Voodoo Curse versus Vain Guardian, and then we'll have another series at 9 o'clock Central European. And that will be to be announced later on. Humanist just waiting for the invite. We should be ready to go. And uh, we'll get into this next draft phase ASAP. Oh, that was, uh, again, a dominant performance from Reliable Union. Do you think they are just the better team here? But we've seen, you know, we've seen Oblivion Lost put up a fight. Um, but is Reliable Union just, you know, got the kind of names that we've seen before? For instance, I definitely have seen Axel, I've definitely seen uh, Lakota of before, you know, these are the kind of players that I've seen in, in the Challenger series before as well, so, you know, these guys have got experience behind them. Well, I mean, there's experience on the other side of the coin, an HF guy for sure as well, and uh, I don't know, I think Reliable Union did look incredibly strong. They shut down a comp uh, you know, they, they, they forced Oblivion Lost into a playstyle that just completely went against the way the comp needed to be played, and they were just setting the pace of the game, and that's usually the sign of a good team. Absolutely, we're into draft now. Glaive and Lyra bands once more. Actually, Lance prioritized by Oblivion Lost, and actually going to give the Adagio straight over again. I'm thinking Reliable Union probably can't believe their luck, but Reliable Lost... <laughs> <laughs> must uh, must have a game plan going forward, and they're going to lock in the Black Feather, another hero that has been fairly popular recently, especially on first rotation B side. Deals with the Lance pretty well. I mean, yeah, it's not if Black Feather has burned his Rose offensives and he tries to close the gap and get Scythian walled away or something, it can be annoying. But typically, you know, Black Feather will be on target. They get the Githium wall him away. He'll either use his A to get back on target or Rose Offensive forward. So he's very sticky. It's kind of like how Koshka uh, reacts into a Lance. Like, you can knock the Koshka away, but her move speed is so high, she's right back on target. Uh, Kroll's going to be coming out here. Interesting. Yeah, Kroll locked in here for Oblivion Lost, and now they're going to make that final pickup. Looks like it's going to be a Baron, so giving themselves that ultimate late game win condition and and it's going to sort of raise, raise questions as to where this cruel build is going to go if it's just going to be a, a peel build you know try and peel as best you can for baron or if it's actually going to see that weird aftershock type build that we you know stormcrown aftershock that we did see that jackson was raving about so much waiting for the final pickup here for reliable union let's see what they decide to lock in the uh, draft gets cancelled they don't lock in anything i will double check that they didn't have maybe had an issue with the draft phase there looks like um rick Amaza, unfortunately maybe just got kicked out of draft in some way state, shape or form but we'll probably just get through the draft phase it was the last pick but everything is the same and reliable union might just get that uh same pick up at the end there i like you can't help sometimes sometimes things just uh don't work the way you want and uh humanists what, what would you think would have been a good lock-in finally for that composition going up against the lance the Cruel and the Baron when you had the um, Adagio and Blackfeather locked in? Lance, Cruel, Baron, Adagio, Blackfeather. Mm. Let me see. I like It's it's hard for me to keep that in my short-term memory. I just like to see it visually here. Yeah, I agree. Same, to be honest. Just uh... It's really tough because... I think the Adagio Rome could struggle this game a lot. 
conversely, he could do decently in the lane. It looks like they are going to... If they do the black for their lane with the, the Taka, that should be okay. Taka... Taka will have advantage over Kroll early. That's a, a target that can also take out the Baron with some nice burst damage. Yeah, and I mean, they've, they've the got a lot closer. of dive, right? They've got huge amounts of dive coming out from Reliable Union. Yeah. They've got to get through the, the, the Lance, though. This is something that we saw, um, I believe it was Gangstars, tried to do with a Lyra instead of a, a Cruel. They tried to um, basically go full protect the Baron composition, but they didn't really find the good Lance position that they needed to get the peel working. We'll have to see whether, actually, the Oblivion Lost can achieve something slightly better. And now it's time for me to say goodbye and hand over to Humanist and Tasty Bacon, ready for this next game. All right, Excalibur, go have a rest. Be a wonderful cameraman. Give our viewers the most beautiful experience possible. We're going to get to have a crawl on a surfboard this game, Bacon. How you feel about that? Always like me some crawl on a surfboard. And, uh, <laughs> it, it should be an interesting one. It's uh, two melee heroes up against them. I like crawl in this situation. Uh, the Adagio, you can do a lot of work to kind of disrupt what he's going to be trying to bring to the table. But especially looking forward to this Baron. I love this jungle start that Oblivion Lost is doing. Where you have uh, both your carry and your jungler in the jungle. They're actually giving a fair bit of the gold. Actually, the majority of the gold to No Game No Life on this Baron. So really trying to propel him into that late game as quickly as possible. That's because they know what's up. Although they weren't efficient on that mid there, that's okay. No problem. I like it. I mean, the thing is, you draft a Baron, that Baron needs to get up with some items. Uh-oh, Black Feather impaled up, taking some pretty good damage. It's going to be Axel going down first blood to Baron. That is not the start you want uh, if you are Reliable Union. Yeah, not at all. There's... Uh... Definitely the start that Oblivion Lost was looking for, but keep in mind, they did get first blood in game number one as well, and that did not go their way. Uh-oh. Deja vu. <laughs> Deja vu. Rika Meza and uh, Liko finding Daredevil in the jungle, and off the back of that, they're going to look to go ahead and take away the uh, the back amps here, and he's going to be starting with the Treant. Should be getting the regen off of this, and this is exactly what Taka wants to be able to start snowballing. Kroll's going to have a hard time one-on-one -on -one down here. He takes a little bit of damage right off the bat. Rikameza just trying to force him out. Daredevil tries to stand his ground. Liko just continues to get damage down onto that back camp. Rikameza will move down, clean it up. So th this is just a lost jungle very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. It's completely getting taken out. Meanwhile, lost, though, trying to set up a gank in lane. Yeah, I'm not sure where that went wrong. But oh my goodness, Black Feather does eventually go down. Rico is a little bit late to the party, and Liko, a slightly out of position, cannot get in there. It's going to have to take the long way around the bottom side of the Kraken pit. And Daredevil's actually set up in the bush. This could be a really nice kill. Oh, Kroll, get this dodge. You'll get him. Oh, yeah, right there. He's on target. Look at that. HF guy wants some. Get some. Impale a Githian wall. And that's a dead adagio. It's about as easy as it gets right there, Bacon. Yeah, absolutely. And Kroll going to be very happy to pick up a, a couple of easy kills. Here is he gets his first one on the board, the other two going to Baron. So definitely the, the heroes you want these kills to be going on to for the side of Oblivion lost. Much better start here in game two for them. This early game is like, I don't know, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 for Oblivion lost here. You need Baron to have a decent early game. If he does, you get into that mid game, get into the late game, just an absolute monster. And uh, Reliable Union can't let that happen going to be uh, Rika Meza moving forward in that Kaku, just not quite finding the target he was looking for. Missed Impale from HF Guy. A reliable Union kind of just staying as a unit, threatening the Baron here, making it very difficult for him to move forward. He's going to have to just last hit under that turret constantly. Yeah, he's going to be uh, pushed in, but, you know, obviously Baron is uh, fairly decent at last hitting under the turret, although he's going to lose out on a couple. Uh, but it's... You know, for Baron, you really just want to be able to stay safe. We, we've talked about it multiple times on the Vainglory 8 broadcast specifically, where if you go even as a Baron, you've won. Like, that's yeah. kind of the way that he works, so. Yeah. And how easy of a win condition is that? I mean, it's not, it's mentally a very easy win condition. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, you have to mechanically make your plays to get there, but how you know it's it's almost that simple, which is really cool. Is you just <laughs> like the CS, you have you're trading as far as the items, and suddenly he just gets a little bit of a range advantage when he puts a second point in that ult, and things snowball from there. Absolutely, and meanwhile, the Kroll down in the jungle and be keeping an eye on this build path. Looks like he's going for a. This is this is probably one of my least favorite ones. If you go for the Storm Crown, and then still only have your primary like damage item be a uh, breaking point, but we'll see how it works for him. Yeah, hopefully that's not the case. I I'd rather see something else. Definitely some defensive vibes. Rico makes it take a lot of damage. Baron gets the last attack off, gets the kill. Oh, that is, this is so nice, Bacon. So nice for them right now. Yeah, absolutely. And again, just pumping extra gold onto this Baron. Already has the, uh, I, how did I just completely forget the the name? Sorrowblade? Of Sorrowblade. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, man. It happens to me. <laughs> One of the most basic items in the game. Just flat damage. And I forget somehow. your name sometimes, too. Rip. I'm like, the tasty sausages. I don't know. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> See? I distracted people. They forgot. that You forgot Sorrow Blade. <laughs> Either way, uh, looking back and like again, Sorrow Blade already completed has some components now for the breaking point. Like this Baron is mm. getting very far ahead, and we said if you go even, you've won. Well, if you win, you've just won even harder. Oh my! Oh, this Baron wants to win so hard right now. He's doing his best. He's farming well. He's got kills, three kills here in six minutes. This is all a Baron ever wants. Ooh, look at that impale. They're moving forward. Baron's ult's going to drop right on top of Liko. No game, jumps forward. Jump Jets gets the kill onto the Adagio. But has he put himself into a bad position? Talk is here. Blackfeather as well. They can't commit. Daredevil on the front line. The fountain comes out, keeps him alive. Oh. They turn it. They take the Blackfeather. Can they get the Talk at two? No game, jumps forward. Jump Jets, the tax are there. They get it, Bacon. They get the ace right as Liko respawns and this could be the turret as well that was just a massive fight for oblivion lost and it's, what a difference what a turnaround from game number one they were playing scared they were playing so defensively not committing to fights and now they're going all in diving under turrets and picking up kills a massive turnaround for oblivion lost and they have a humongous lead seven minutes in and they have almost a 4k gold lead they lost game one yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> they did. It feels like a just completely Somehow. different story in game two. Yeah, like I mean, the, the names are swapped. Are we sure we didn't just like just change yes. everyone's names and keep them on the same? Everybody side? swapped. That's what it's the players like. all swapped. Yeah. Well, things have stalled out here. Rika Meza has picked up Atlas Baldron, and uh, we talked about this before. It'll be decent against the Coral. Um, it loses a little bit of its effectiveness against the Baron. I'm kind of sad that he did end up going, that they're actually this far ahead because of this Kroll build. Like, because now they can be like, see, we went with this build and it worked. When <laughs> it's like, it's all because Baron is just so far ahead. Like, you can build almost whatever you want on Kroll at this point, And you're probably just going to win because this Baron has such a massive lead. Already sitting at two items in the lane. You can see Riku Meza again going for a very early infusion, but this time it's almost out of uh, you know desperation, trying to bring yeah. the game back in their favor. They need to hope that works out, because if it doesn't, that's going to just set them back even further. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, this is the, uh, the wild infusion right here. Definitely a defensive... I think that's a really good uh, you know thing that you point out there. there. There's so many different ways to use infusion. Like last, last game was the snowball type. This one a completely different story. I, I was just thinking, like, if Reliable Union came through in Game 2 and put on a similar performance, that, that would be a very big statement against this team, uh, Oblivion Lost. But Oblivion Lost really strong here. HF Guy is going to find Liko as he moves into that right mustache brush. Oblivion Lost as three, Reliable Union as three. Neither team quite seeing an opening. I'd like to see uh, Oblivion Lost keep this aggression up, keep the pressure on. You know, you have this big lead, 
just keep abusing the fact that you are so far ahead of your opponents. But uh, right now, they're kind of just content with continuing the farm. May actually end up getting... Uh, uh, nope, they're going to not go. They, they were taking a re what started off as a really weird rotation, but then they all end up moving back with uh, No Game, No Life. And much better choice there. Tyrant's Monocle. It's happening. All right, Baron. We'll see if he can find some damage. Rika Meza, he's into the thick of things. Gets that uh, pauldron off very quickly. Baron took a lot of damage. That verse does come out connecting onto HF guy. Black Feathers in deep. They're trading a lot of damage. Rico Meza, can he get out of here? Oh, yes, he will. But they lose Daredevil on the front line. No game. You have to stay at range. Can he do it? Black Feather closes the gap. The jump jets backwards. That's going to be the X Ratsu and the execution. Riku Meza finding the kill. Bit of a sloppy fight there for Oblivion Loss, and a good job to capitalize on that by Reliable Union. And a very similar fight to what we saw from game number one. No game, no life. You know, has so much damage. Yes, he needs to stay on the back lines, but needs to know just how far back he should mm -hmm. be. Like You want to be on the back lines, yes, but you still need to be able to dish out damage. You're the primary carry for this team. You're the main and pretty much only source of damage. If you aren't staying at least close enough to be able to get attacks off, then your team is going to lose every single fight. See, especially. I see it. I see it in reverse, though. I, the same. It's the same point you're making, but in reverse. I think it's his front line should be staying at his max attack range because he's he knows where he has to be positioned for safety, right? So he doesn't want to move in because they're going to close the gap onto him. But like, if if his front line stays within the range of him, then that's what they need to do because he they have to peel for him he has to find the damage i don't know no matter which way you look at it the team is not positioned properly that's the main yeah point that's why it's just sloppy if that was felt sloppy for them mm -hmm. we'll see if they can improve upon that because they're gonna have to otherwise they will be allowing the team to come back reliable union we've seen they you know are perfectly willing to just all in onto a fight even when they're behind they end up winning the previous fight as a result, so getting a fair bit of gold back. Obviously, they're still going to be really looking to uh, win a couple more, but try and get some pressure onto the map. Immense gold payout. That's going to be nice for the side of Oblivion Lost as these items continue coming through. Baron going to be picking up some defensive items here too, so that should also help quite a bit. Baron was so far ahead in farm early game, but then they just started fighting, fighting, fighting. I think they needed to continue farming because Axel is right back on track with farming with him, like pretty even here. Oh, it's going to be a nice three-man Givian right into the wall here. First comes out of Liko. It's going to be blocked off, though. No game trying to get some of those breaking point stacks from range. So no infusions actually out right now. So these are just kind of a straightforward fight with their current items. No, nobody's going to go down. They just uh, disengage. And uh, a full disengage is completed as they back off. Meanwhile, uh, the rest of Oblivion Lost continuing to push in the lane. But I want to go back to these item builds again. Kroll still is kind of in a state of limbo. I mean, he doesn't have any damage, but he doesn't really have any tankiness either. So he's just sort of <laughs> like there, I guess. He's, he's great he for taking down objectives. Mobility. But, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's just, I'm just not a fan of that build path. That particular build path does have the breaking point now, but again, how are you going to get stacks on it? Because you're not dishing out oh, a lot of damage. Oh, no, why? Why'd you build the breaking point, man? I don't like it. I, I mean, like it there's so many different half. things he could have done. So many different, I'm not even going to go down the route of all the different things, like a slumbering husk. A slumbering hut, like you don't even, you just stay alive. It's so good. All right. Axel's trying to move forward in here. Daredevil on the front line. Can he stay alive? Bacon, this Kroll build that you were just criticizing. Can he get the work done? Rico Mess is low, but slow. So is Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil, he's going to go down. No game, no life. You're in deep. You're in way too deep, my man. The gap has been closed on to Baron, and Baron goes down. Oh, my goodness. Now, HF guy, he's going to go ahead and try to juke around the bushes here. HF guy, can you roll over the wall? Buy enough time. That on point over the wall and oh. impale back. And that's going to be the ace as Blackfeather finds the kill. Now six to eight. It's Reliable Union finding a very good fight. And so smart at the end there for Axel to just wait on the other side of the wall. 
and say, well, I can poke him from over the wall, and then if he tries to come back, I just take him out, and that's exactly what ends up happening. A great fight, again, from Reliable Union. Not so much so from the side of Oblivion Lost. And again, that crawl build. I mean, he was attacking the entire time. He was he was on a target almost the entire duration of his life until he started running at the very end. Four stacks of breaking point. <sighs> what if he got... Dude, what if he got like a Null Wave Gauntlet instead? He could completely afford that item. And that would just just you just drop that on the adagio when you engage in. That, mm -hmm. I mean the the impact that would have on your team. I'm just saying like the impact overall of this item. Not to say that it's like the perfect item theory craft. There's just so many different items you could build that would have way yeah. more impact in these fights. I feel like it's the problem. A lot of the I've seen really from a lot of players when they play this crawl is that it they sort of like don't really fully have an idea of what they want to be doing like they're they they do not feel torn between wanting to do damage and wanting to be utility and i feel like you mm -hmm. have to pick one of the two well once again they're a little bit uh split up feels like miscommunication but that was the uh was that an atlas burned yeah that was uh takas atlas burned early on in the fight well they do have the double atlas the dodge you as well as taka right now mm -hmm. Right That's now. one more reason, Bacon, to, to not go into the breaking point. They, I mean, they had one Atlas early on. We talked about that. Um, there's a good chance they would go into two. And so now the breaking point's even less effective. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, it's effective against both the Baron and the Kroll. So I definitely want to give credit to Reliable Union for going for the double Atlas. Yeah. I actually wouldn't be surprised if they end up with three of them because you can see Axel is building up uh, some as well. <laughs> the only damage threat is weapon power. So Yeah. Yeah, it's making uh, Baron a little less effective just because of the choices they're making here. He's falling behind in his farm where he was leading. He is now in a deficit. 147 last hits for Axel to the 132 uh, of no game here. And that's just a crying shame. It really is. And especially with how big of a lead they got early on, how far ahead this Baron was. Well, there's another opportunity here. Yeah, I mean, Baron, I guess an early game hero now. <laughs> no game. It's going to jump jet forward, getting some nice stacks, good damage onto Liko. They're going to have to be careful here. HF guy moving forward for his team. Rick Meza looking for a target. Daredevil just trying to get that buff up as he moves forward from bush to bush. Reliable Union not sensing that this is the fight they want to take, especially with the Adagio taking a lot of damage early on. Maybe as he heals up here, they'll move forward. Oblivion Lost able to claim that in mid. Just denying a little bit away. Not too big of a deal. So they start up this Kraken right now, Bacon. Yeah, this is actually a bold move, but Reliable Union isn't getting there to take care of it. The Storm Crown again is going to be working wonders on this Kraken. Oh, they're going to get there. Damage. Here they come. Here they come, Bacon. Uh oh, what is it going to happen? It's going to get the Kraken. Baron got the Kraken. Now it's for the fight. Blackfeather took a lot of damage right off the. Oh, look at the splash damage. They, that's one of the things when you go for the Kraken, all that splash damage. The Adagio is going to get wrecked right here. Axel, can he get out? Oh, yes, he does. He does get out. Rikumeza will be able to teleport home as well. What a turn of events. As Oblivion lost, they, they pull the trigger on that Kraken. They get it. They get the fight. Wonderful. Yeah, really good job. They cleared out all the vision in the area and then just started up that crack, and that was extremely risky, but it completely pays off for them, and now they can try and push in. They, again, the, they can use their range here. That splash damage is huge. Baron is still very, very threatening. Uh, even though they lost the last couple fights, he's still pretty heavily built up, and they're looking to continue pushing in. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a threat. Taka X Retz, who's on to the Baron, who jumped Jets away, repositions. Tries to get some attacks off here. He's starting to stack up the clump to get the end wall. Can he find that damage that he needs? Liko stunned up. Oh, lots of damage. The boomerang's going to come out swinging the miss there. Atlas lands onto three of Oblivion losses. Kraken marches forward. Liko is down. Reliable Union starting to crumble here. Can Axel and Riku Meza find the defense here? X Retsu forward. Kitan over the top. Taka is just not able to do it right now. Baron, Daredevil, and HF guy look like they're going to be able to close this game out. Felt like they threw the game away, Bacon, but they come back and they are going to take game two, tying this series up 1-1. One, one. And, and again, it was it was a very risky call on the Kraken, but risks sometimes pay off. 
And that is exactly what happened for Oblivion Lost. They were able to then take that Kraken and use it as enough of a distraction to splash damage, like you said, when they were clumped up. That was really the downfall for Reliable Union. They had to be clumped up trying to steal that Kraken away. And that just made it into a shooting gallery for this Baron. No game, no life. Able to do a ton of damage down the stretch. And they close it out with that single push. I mean, and <laughs> if you're the Baron, that, that would be that's the best thing you could ever see when they all just clump up like that. I don't know. Like, Scoundrel, are you much of a, a Baron man? I, I think... It's worth exploring what Baron does to an enemy team in terms of decision making and also how you approach the game. I think personally, when I see a Baron locked in, especially, you know, I think, you know, it puts a timer in your mind that you have to make something happen in the early game. You have to be super aggressive in the early game. And, and if you're forced into decision making that you don't feel comfortable with or isn't quite to your game plan, that's where you make mistakes. You know, you know, I, I think um, they went down the CP Blackfeather route, they went down the. Down the um, Weapon power attacker route. I, I actually probably would have preferred it the other way around. I think if you, you you had a CP attacker on board, it provides more of a burst threat to the the Baron, who doesn't necessarily build a huge amount of defense. Uh, and I don't really think like the uh, the weapon power power attacker. You know, if you're getting into range of the enemy carry, that's just giving cruel opportunity to land weakness stacks on you as weapon power attacker before you even get any damage down. So. I, I don't know. I, I didn't totally agree with the build paths that they went. And then that last Kraken fight. I mean. It, it forced, I mean, it's, by the time that Re uh, Re uh, Reliable Union realized what was going on, it forced them to make a, like a split haste decision to try and go in and try and make something happen because they didn't really didn't want to lose the Kraken. At that point, they probably would have been better off saying, okay, we lost Kraken, let's just regroup as a unit, try and take a, a fight where we can just ignore Kraken for a bit and get the kills and then try and steady the ship in our own base, but wasn't quite the case uh, in that time round. And also, there was one tiny bit in the last fight, guys, where... Blackfeather used his Rose offensive backwards, de defensively, and it meant he only had one charge. I don't know if you remember, they fought just outside their base. If he had another charge, he could have got directly on top on, of Baron as soon as he'd used his um, his jump. And he might have actually been able to get the kill, and they might have been able to turn things around. So just tiny decision-making processes. But Baron, it puts a timer in your enemy's mind, and they don't feel comfortable with the way that they were you know, planning on approaching the game. Well, we're into uh, game three here. We'll see how that game two weighs on these players. As Lance and Koshka picked up here for Oblivion Lost. Very strong combination here. Very strong, very early game focused. And saw in last game, they can win the early game. Or they'll be heavily dependent on who they pick up as their third. I would actually love to see them take something like the Baron again with their final pick, if it's still available, because... You have this early game to just really propel that Baron into the late game, which is exactly what they did in game number two. Yeah, and Koshka's burst would still be online by the time Baron starts to come online. Mm -hmm. So the two of them together, how much burst damage that is, is just pretty insane. Mm -hmm. oh, we're going to see Taka come through again for uh, Reliable Union, and they're going to finalize it up with a Gwen here. So they're going to pick up the Gwen. You know, you've got that free reflex block. You've got the extra movement speed against the uh, the... Koshka and the Lance here, so it gives a little bit of a get out of jail free card for that hero on the side of Reliable Union. It also means that, you know, picking Vox into Gwen doesn't feel too great. I mean, it's better than picking Vox into Ringo, but, you know, just send a message that you've got a fairly dominant laner. And Baron is going to be the choice again here for Oblivion Lost. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, guys. That's right. And uh, I, I think Baron will struggle early against the Gwen, but. Once again, we look to the numbers, we look to the levels. If they're trading evenly, Baron will have the advantage in the late game. Not only that, but I said it before, I, I like the Baron pickup here because of the fact that they have the tools to help the Baron through the early game with this Kashka and the Lance. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do with the uh, the Taka on Riku Meza again here. Uh, hopefully has a little bit of a better showing than he was able to pull off in game number two, but the build path is going to be something I really keep my eyes on. See where they decide to go. Weapon blade for both the Gwen and the Taka to start, at least. Right. It's time for me to hand off to you two gentlemen once more. So, Humanist and Tasty Bacon, take it away. All right. Thanks, Studley. We are into the game here. Players making their way out onto their positions. Look like it's going to be, once again, HF guy holding the lane bacon while his 
two core players, uh, Daredevil, no game, are going to go ahead and clear out the backs, maybe the mids, and then move up. Yep, yeah, and again, just all about getting as much gold as you can onto this Baron right off the bat. Although Kashka is actually going to take uh, all of these. How does Kashka classic have Kashka? Huh? It, it says Kashka got credit for four minions when they had only killed three. That's just a series of uh, gold iterations, technically. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, they move up as three. I was, uh, let me go ahead and clear that. It's going to be the the Elder Tree and taken down. Looks like by Rika Meza and Liko. It should be pretty easy for them there. And the rest uh, of Oblivion Lost look to just pressure out the Gwen, which, is, you know, once again, this is nice. You, you don't have to crush the jungle necessarily, but you have to clear your jungle and pressure the lane. They were able to do that with the first rotation. Yeah, and just putting some pressure onto Axel, forcing Axel to play back a little bit. Rika Meza going to try and get some damage on the HF guy. No game. At this point, before Taka builds up really much defense, gets too elusive, you can, you know, trade just a little bit. Not if Taka's on your face, but if you're able to get a, an attack off, Taka's going to feel the threat here. And that'll, you know, fall off and then come back very strong. Liko's made his move up here. This will definitely help the Gwyn out, but so is Daredevil. Daredevil's going to be looking for a target. Impales! Whoa, that actually missed. They're going on the Gwyn. Daredevil's going to be able to get that kill. Liko uses his boots he's out of that one but a nice first blood over here for oblivion lost one more time yeah daredevil going very aggressive and picking up that kill that's all three games now that oblivion lost has actually picked up the first blood so their early very early rotations have been uh really working out for them well i like to see it this is a win condition for their composition. You talked about it. I really like to see Daredevil up in this top brush here. He's going to be able to catch them by surprise. What I would like to see is Oblivion Lost have a little patience. HF guy, hold that brush for for <laughs> some uh, vision. It's not going to happen, but just not push that lane. Like if Koshka's hanging out, quit basic attacking the, the wave. Let it push back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely. Especially because Baron with that AoE damage just kind of naturally pushes the lane when attacking because you're doing you know, just more damage in general so uh it, it's you really have to play very passively if you're trying to set up a gank as a baron the downside to that is that if you just suddenly stop attacking your opponents are gonna kind of get an idea that something might be up because you're clearly trying to pull the lane back to you mm -hmm. yep there's definitely a balance there and uh, the top players will be able to find a way to pull that wave back without making it too obvious. Right now, Baron's quite happy. Just uh, farming away. 28 last hits here. Nothing special. 30 last hits for him. With this wave, he'll be up ahead of Axel pretty good. And Axel and Reliable Union made a rotation as three to find the Koshka. That's one way to take the Koshka down early here. A very nice job for them. This is going to mean Rikumez is in the jungle with HF guy one-on-one. -on -one. Well, no game is going to be a slight disadvantage up in the lane. It looks like HF guy lets his jungle go. So that's going to be a successful invade for uh, Riku Meza. And they are definitely going to be looking for an opportunity here. Uh-oh. HF guy. <laughs> They're trading in the lane and in the jungle here. That's like the jungle would be a little bit more exciting of a fight. Riku Meza tries to dodge out, gets the Kaku. Daredevil loses sight of him. Crystal Sindri, he knows what he wants, though. Are they going to make the rotation down? Oh, he misses the impale. No game, no life. He's out of position. He tries to jump jet away, but this is a Taka you're talking about. Two kills going the way of Reliable Union. Oh, my goodness. Just a little... I don't know if it's necessarily miscommunication, but a rotation without information. Yeah, absolutely. And well, Daredevil going to just try and hold the lane, keep them from taking this turret. Well, when No Game No Life does come back, he will have the Sorrow Blade completed, so it'll be a nice little uh, power spike for him. And of course, HF Guy also picking up the Fountain of Renewal. But look at the gold in the pockets of everyone on Reliable Union. They're going to get back to the shop and go on a bit of a spending spree, and the Sorrow Blade and the Fountain of Renewal coming out for them as well. That's pretty nice. So these, te I mean, these teams are pretty even as far as the items they've completed. We're gonna see, the, you know, the the different kind of route in the jungle, as far as I mean, the item choices for our laners and captains very very similar, but Kashka and Taka will start to kind of deviate. 
they are going to be looking for an opportunity to invade the jungle, steal away these camps. Daredevil still needs to play very aggressively because it, well, it is Akashka. Uh, looking on the other side, you see Taka finishing off the Storm Crown. Going to be going down the Crystal Route, so going to be plenty of burst coming out of him. Oh, a little X Retsu right onto the Baron. You see how much damage he takes. You really have to respect this Taka right now, especially with the Crystal bit. He's going to start building into whatever Crystal item he decides. It's just going to make it so much more effective. And uh, just great execution damage that really has to worry the Baron. Well, right now, they are going to be looking for that Impale. Axel taking down pretty low. <laughs> Daredevil! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta be careful. Uh-oh, Taka found him, but the Yummy Cat of Frenzy comes out. Can they turn it around? Taka finding Daredevil. No game, can't stay on his ground. Doesn't have the range. Is he gonna take down to the gift of fire? Oh, no. He will stay alive. HF guy will be left alone to try and hold this turret. And it looks like it should be dropping pretty quickly. Reliable Union up 4-1. Starting to take a pretty decent net worth advantage as we approach seven minutes. Yeah, absolutely. They have themselves now about a 2,000 gold lead or so, a little bit more than that. They're going to be taking this gold miner just to increase that even further. An immense gold payout going their way. Gold each. Gwen is going to pick up a tension bow second item. Just going for that heavy burst composition, it feels like. Yep, definitely heavy burst uh, between a nice charged up shot or two out of Gwyn and a little X Retsu combo coming out of the Taka. That's going to be pretty hard to live through. I mean, the HF guy is going to have to burn that fountain pretty quickly. Well, right now, oh, HF guy not connecting with the Impale. Eats a good chunk of damage thanks to that Gwen with the tension bow. Yeah, nice little burst of damage comes out. No game. 63 last hits to the 65, 66 of Axel. Daredevil jumps in, doesn't know the talk is there. He's going to go ahead and reposition, but has to be careful. Get the wall back. We'll buy a little bit of time. Jump jets away. Oblivion lost, realizing this is not a fight they want to take just yet. Absolutely. Oblivion lost, definitely. They're going to have to get scaled up a bit more. And Baron has actually fallen behind the Gwen. Although Gwen picking up the tension bow, you know, it's such an early game focused item. Mm -hmm. you, know, you wonder if, uh, you know, maybe the Baron will be able to get a little bit deeper into his build as a result of Gwen going for that item. We'll have to wait and see, but uh, obviously no game, no life. Definitely just going to be looking to continue farming up as safely as possible. I'm going to want to get to that breaking point and a Tyrant's Monocle in the inventory before they're really looking for fights. It's really interesting, you know, the, the what you pointed out there is Axel's pretty much just gambling with his item choice that he's going to shut this Baron down. I mean, that's what it's all about. You pick up this early game item to make sure the Baron never gets his late game item. Daredevil jumps in, looking to dissuade Reliable Union, but himself an HF guy taking a lot of damage already. Buckshot coming through, connecting on the team. Oblivion lost, just wanted to defend this turret. Do not want to lose anybody. I think it's, it's Reliable Union pretty clearly understand that uh, Oblivion Lost not ready to fight. Yeah, not at all, as they are just taking a lot of damage up front. HF Guy already down pretty low. Does have a good amount of regen, but they're looking for this turret. Yeah, they've jumped deep onto the turret. Riku Meza wants some no game trying to get out the backside. He's stunned up with the verse. They've lost Axel. This was the dive. Maybe a lost. We're waiting for Reliable Union. Can they live through it? Riku Meza, he's locked on a Daredevil. Gets him. HF guy, he's trying to chase Riku Meza. Jump jets forward. Can they get in range? No game. Probably a smart decision to go ahead and get out of that one. I think a little X Retsu kite and combo would have taken him out. Absolutely. So. They do get one kill, it ends up traded back, but this turret is very low. Oblivion Lost trying to capitalize on uh, a little bit of over-aggression from the side of Reliable Union. Reliable Union is working on this gold miner now, obviously that Storm Crown is going to help them take it fairly quickly. Oh, but it gets stolen, HF guy! Uh, nice uh, impale. Uh. Woo! Nice timing right there, HF guy. These are the kind of clutch plays that you need to... to claw your way back into these games hf guy making it happen and let's uh, see if his team can go ahead and follow that lead 
Yeah, well, they're definitely going to hope that they can. No game, no life. Starting to get built up. Has the breaking point now. Has the lucky coin. So there's just uh, a little ways off from being able to have that Tyrant's Monocle and really feeling like you can make an impact. Yeah, he definitely starts ramping up. Uh, breaking point for the Gwyn. I'm not sure I always agree with it, but it's it's definitely a decent item choice for her. Uh, she should be able to get pretty good work here. Not as big of a power spike as I see when the Tyrant's Monocle will come out on this yeah. Baron, but she is ahead right now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Taka also finished off in Aftershock, so they're, again, just so much burst on the side of Reliable Union. They're just going to be looking to take either the Kashka or the Baron and just blow them up immediately. They're going to take this turret, he says, hi, it lands onto the Lance. And they should be able to get out of this when HF guy just meets shielding for his team. Are they going to go for They're going to go for it. He jumped just forward. Lego Dev taking a lot of damage. The Impale is there. Taka, you're in the front lane. Taka's down. Oblivion lost. They're doing it right now. Bacon, Lego's down as well. They took the fight. They want to jump jets over the wall. They want to chase Axel. Gwyn, one of the more mobile heroes. They won't be able to chase her down. But what, what a turnaround. Oblivion lost. Playing the long con. They've spent the entire series playing much more passively and avoiding those fights in those situations just so that when it all matters most, they can jump in, go aggressive, and catch their opponents off guard. At least that's uh, that's the story I'm going to go with. Dude, you know that's the story I want to hear. <laughs> and tell it I mean, so that's what well, it felt Bacon. like. Like That was a fight that in the previous two games they would not have taken. They would have been backing off completely. But instead, now, even before like they may feel compositionally ready to go for it, they still pulled the trigger on the fight, and it looked like they did manage to catch Reliable Union off guard, not expecting them to come chase them down. Oof. Well, right now, uh, no game has built us online. We were, we were waiting for the Tyrant's Monocle. Um, he's got a minion's foot as well, and now he's just pretty much waiting on... Does the situation call for an infusion? If it does, he grabs it and they fight, and he's he's definitely in fighting shape, although he's a little under leveled. Or if they don't force the fights, he can just sit back, continue to build into that second monocle. I, it's a pretty good position. Well, right now, it's uh, a second monocle. I think would be uh, a really help the damage a lot and get you that extra crit chance and course a little bit extra flat damage as well but uh, attack speed always a welcome addition for a baron as well so we'll see if it's going to be tornado trigger or monocle as the lucky coin is uh completed so for now be moving up crystal centric cleared out here reliable union taking that pretty cheekily very quickly under the nose of oblivion lost they move forward, HF guy clearing out the scout trap in that right tri brush there. Just kind of uh, getting a little vision, a little scouting mission, technically. And we're about a minute from Kraken here, so this is pretty good timing for Oblivion Lost, all things considered. Well, right now, again, one minute from Kraken, like you, you mentioned, they're going to be looking to try and make some plays around this objective. You got to figure. Whoever gets this Kraken should have a pretty decent uh, edge going into the next uh, stage of this game. Yeah, HF guy, oh. not the target they want, but the Aces High lands onto the Koshka. Can they turn it? They turn it onto the Gwyn. Correct! <laughs> the verse is going to come out. It does connect. I don't know sure they blocked off the stun there. Oh, Riki Meza finds the kill onto Daredevil, but Baron stacking up on the breaking point. She just stacks on his breaking point. Jump jets forwards. He's looking for the Adagio. Baron just wants to dumpster this Adagio, and he should be able to do it soon enough. Lance will be taking a little combat roll over the wall. And that flare comes out. He knows where the Sadagio is. Baron's going to be moving forward. Has mercy, though. They, they realize he just doesn't want to get there. You know, spend all that time chasing, but what a wonderful fight. What what a wonderful call to just turn and just go on that Gwyn. Yeah, really quick uh, reaction. And again, no game, no life. Able to fire shots from over the wall was virtually untouched. And that is not something you can allow to happen if you decide a reliable union. You know, they got the, the ace tight onto the Koshka. They wanted to try and get that quick kill. They weren't able to get it quick enough. 
And by the time they did take down Kashka, No Game, No Life already had about 10 to 15 stacks on that breaking point. And uh, from then on, it was just a quick cleanup as they pick up two kills and weren't able to chase down the Adagio. But uh, hopefully Baron will get some upgraded boots soon. He's still sitting on tier ones, both him and Kashka, both on tier ones. But HF guy, very aggressive movement. HF guy making it happen. Uh, they have to respect the fact that they were impaled, so they don't aggress fully. Maybe if they all just go 100 to, you know, 0 to 100 onto HF guy, they could drop him right there, but they decide not to, so it's not really a problem. But this is very good for Baron. He's going to be, he's got the second monocle, he's got the infusion bacon. Yeah, absolutely. The second monocle infusion live. Kashka, uh, uh -oh, very likely going to look Baron. To pick up an infusion, but. The Atlas oh. Pauldron is there, Bacon. Daredevil taking a lot of damage. The Fountain comes out. He's still alive. HF guy on the front line. They're going to try to kite backwards. ZX Retsu forward. The Fountain comes out of Reliable Union. Rika Meza just trying to keep up these uh, key stacks here. They're going to actually start up on this Kraken. Very interesting. Daredevil wants to teleport out. They, do they, they don't have any idea this is happening. I mean, they have to have an idea it's happening, but they can't see that it's happening. They have to recall. They can't be, they are just not in a position to fight. That was crucial timing for Reliable Union to force them away. Yeah, they didn't get any kills, but they get the Kraken. And now they can look to try and make something happen with this push. They need to be careful, though, because we've already seen that Oblivion Lost can fight them if No Game No Life is able to get some stacks up from a safe position. All right, well, let's see if he can do it. He does have that max range right now as all of his points are into that ultimate. And they got to deal with Kraken. They got to deal with Reliable Union at the same time. They're going to go ahead and start to chip onto this Kraken. Baron's ult comes down. Lance does a little bit of damage. It's not too threatening. As, uh, Yummy Cat and Frenzy onto Axel. Do they want to follow up here? Jump Jets forward. Axel gets deleted out. They just fully commit. Oh my goodness, that's exactly what they needed. That's what they wanted. Reliable Union did not see it coming. So they're going to pay for it. Kraken should go down before he gets another turret. and It's not too bad. You know? yeah, not too bad. Not the, uh, the worst situation for either side there. As uh, a you know, couple kills, able to stop the Kraken without getting really anything onto the crystal turrets. But on the flip side, members of Reliable Union, they have the base open now. So they, uh, you know, if they can just find themselves one more fight, it really seems to be coming down to who gets the jump on who. Like whoever's the first one to engage seems to be coming out on top of these fights more often than not. So I would really... Ex almost expect to see one of these two teams try and set up an ambush, try and set up one of those party brushes that we see uh, every so often. Just try and uh, just get that upper hand because whoever wins next to fight is going to go the upper hand right here. No game, no life. He finds the Adagio. Adagio is going to use his boots to get to the safety of his team. But how safe is the safe place, Bacon? Uh, it's the Atlas Pauldron onto the Baron. Baron jumps back, but Riku Mez is there. He's been stunned up with the Aces High. The first comes out. They're getting good damage onto Axel, but Axel moves back. He's trying to get the damage off onto Lance. This is the Koshka trying to get away. Riku Mez finds the double kill. Oblivion lost or crumbling. They cannot afford to lose. Lance has to make some godly plays here, or this is about to be the end of the game for them. Lance starts to man up. HF guy misses oh. the impale. Axel just stutter stepping his way around. That's the win. That's the win. That's the series. I don't know if he would have been able to hold them off if he had gotten the kill on Gwen, but that last missed impale sort of seals the deal. There will be a couple respawns here, but just not going to be in time. As all three members of Reliable Union just work on this crystal, and they will take it down. They will take the series. What a set of games, though. Both of these teams looking very impressive it looks super strong i think either t either team could have won this series uh reliable union just finding a little bit better of a fight right there and what's crazy is you know we're talking about element of surprise and oblivion lost had it when adagio moved forward but he's able to reposition and they capitalized on it so congrats to them and uh oblivion lost this was the uh, uh, will will ask his down you can maybe uh slide in here 
let us know. But this was a winner's bracket game, yeah? This was a winner's bracket round four, which means that Reliable Union move on. Um, and I'm close to, uh, I don't know whether it's, they've actually qualified for the playoff bracket now, but they are certainly incredibly close. I think that could be qualification though. I, could, I think that could mean qualification now here for uh, Reliable Union to make it through to the uh, winner's bracket next week. So just got confirmation from an admin. It is, that is Reliable Union qualified over Oblivion Lost. And remember, Oblivion Lost have a chance to come back in the loser's bracket now, but that is Reliable Union coming through now. And we will see them next week into that playoff bracket. They will be seeded there appropriately. We're going to go to a very short break, ladies and gentlemen, as we get reset for this next game. And we're actually going to be seeing Lemon and Lime versus Hell Divers. So stick around. We'll be back very, very soon. <laughs> 